All right. Hope that wasn't swine flu, Cliff. Gee, cover your mouth. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did. I've been out uh, moving stuff in a dusty environment here. So. Gee. Uh, here's a here's a, a, a great man, uh, Cliff High and his partner George Ewer, been on the program many, many times. Halfpasthuman.com is the location if you want to get an honest glimpse of what is likely to occur soon. Uh, and I'll just leave it at that for now. All of you listening, I'm sure 99% of you know who Cliff is and, and respect the incredible backbreaking effort he puts into the work that, uh, that he and George publish. At halfpasthuman.com, the new low subscription rates are awesome. Uh, you'll never find material on the internet more incredibly intelligent, more provocative, more intriguing, and compelling than the research that Cliff. He doesn't write it. He's almost a medium about it. He's, uh, he's an interpreter, but in a way that, uh, that few men could match. And I, I just don't mean to blow smoke your way, but I'll well, blow after smoke say, your way. Now, after all that ego boost, I can just go to bed and have a nap. <laughs> See, you can even cough again if you want to. No, that, that's fine. I think all that dust is gone. Uh, we were shedding some, some um, products here that had been uh, destroyed in a windstorm a few years back, and, and mm. uh, pollen and so forth had built up on it. Mm-hmm. But it does bring us into the swine flu and all of that. We've got yeah. a universe of strangeness out there. Where shall we dive in today? Let me dive into this uh, first just for fun because it ties in to the Obama birth certificate wars. Uh, as most of you know, Dr. Orly Tates uh, has introduced into a federal court what she says is a certified copy of registration of live birth. Uh, she actually gave uh, a facsimile of it to World Net Daily uh, it's big news at the top of rents.com and all the rest of it. Now, this is very interesting. Dr. Tates, uh, a practicing dentist and an attorney, uh, is Jewish. Now, big deal. The, the word is, however, that her husband, Yosef Tates, is the self-described CEO of Daylight Chemical Information Systems, Inc., a private software company located in Mission Viejo, California, Santa Fe, New Mexico, and Cambridge, England. Uh, DCIS, Inc. is, get this one, folks, this is Orly Tate's husband. This is Don Nikoloff's article. I'm just putting it up at rents.com. His company is intimately involved with Novartis Pharmaceuticals the patent holder of the bird and swine flu vaccinations. All right? Uh, what a strange web it all is. That rate's so big. Mm. Yes, it does. And uh, apparently, uh, Dr. Tates and perhaps her husband, Yosef, are uh, in Israel now, just two days after she dropped this bombshell into the federal court. Now, there are those who say that it's an obvious forgery. Those stories are up at rents.com as well. They're saying that this document says Republic of Kenya or something like that. Uh, Two years before, Kenya was a republic. So a little bit of a problem there, if that's the case. I frankly haven't studied it enough to be uh, able to speak intelligently about it any more than what I've given you. But in that (laughs) Orly Tate's husband is is heavily involved with Novartis. It just gets to be too much, folks. <laughs> After that's a while. Quite odd. And also, I don't think that the details matter in this case. It's no. very easy to step back and look at this whole yeah. um, sure. birth crisis, if you will, For as sure. uh, uh, simply a strategy or a tool and how it's being used again by one side against the other about the distraction level. We have to admit, however valid the the issue that the level of energy being put into it by people that could be otherwise occupied with other forms of conspiracy theories Mm -hmm. uh, is pretty huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, Indeed. And that's right out of the manual in the sense of, you know, if you've got a real problem in hand A, do something in hand B to get them to look that way. (laughs) We got a hand C. I know. Is this one of those eight-handed things? I'm yeah, sure. No, it is. I, I tell you, it's it, it's it gets to be almost laughable. The directions that the uh, the assaults are coming from now. I mean, yeah. this this food health bill. 
uh, you're keenly interested in our right to feed ourselves properly and nutritiously. And when you look at the government, uh, it's like, how do you call the government? Our food czar. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Dr. Death. Yeah, I mean, from Monsanto. This yeah. guy is a, a, a GMO uh, death uh, wizard, if you will. And I, I don't mind calling him. He's a public figure. But look at this. Read that the insanity of this HR 2749, which passed the House. Yeah. Who are these people? I don't. I don't call them a government anymore. No, I don't call that, them Americans. This is bullshit. I mean, that that. Excuse me, but that you read that bill and you just can't believe what you're reading. I know it is. It has gone beyond the point of absurdity, and we're we actually now have to go back to the um, what was the guy's name? Um, Hanlon. Robert Hanlon, this author who came up with the theory that, or, or the little saying, never ascribe to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. There and I don't know. think that applies anymore. I think no. we must ascribe no. to malice uh, the stupid or action. Absolute malice. It's almost genetically endowed on the other side, the dark side. These people, yeah. they're not us. They don't think like us. Uh, psychopathic personalities I don't think is adequate. Uh, because that, that suggests that they were normal to begin with. Or that they have me. limited effect as well. That's I mean, right. They're true sociopaths in the sense yeah. that their, yeah. their disease or evil or craziness spreads out far beyond themselves. I just really am, am to the point now where I don't, I don't consider those people in Washington uh, to be a government at all. Not a government of and by and for us. They're a government of and by and for vested interests who, right. who don't give a, a good hoot about us whether we live or die. We're just numbers and digits and useless eaters and all the rest of it. Well, and there's another and even more sinister component to that. I like taking and drawing conclusions from observations. And, and we learn in the Aikido dojos, you know, you, you learn by observation and you, you make your conclusions based on what you can factually observe and verify. And this idea that um, you can't attribute malice to what's going on and, and uh, place it upon those people that are implementing it. I think it has to be reexamined because if you take all of the facts and you leave out the theory or the conclusion that they want to have a population reduction on a massive scale, nothing makes sense. It's all in isolation. It all falls apart. However, if you put that theory in place, mm -hmm. then all of these little bits and pieces all jump right in line, like the um, the Food and Safety <laughs> Act bill, as well as all the other screwiness, including mm -hmm. the uh, indemnification of all of the manufacturers in the entire chain of the uh, antivirus components that they're going to give you. I won't dignify it by calling it a vaccine. And even mm -hmm. vaccines are questionable as to whether mm -hmm. they ever really work. Of course. But... It, it all comes together to support the premise that there is a move underway that was active now and probably launched early this year um, in a serious way that goes to the idea of elimination of a big chunk of the human populace. Yes. And it's an absurd thing to, to even suppose that there would be a small group of humans that has decided among themselves that they're going to get rid of two-thirds of all of us on, our pla on the planet. Well, they've written about it. They've published it over the years. This is yeah, not new. Yeah. I, know, I know, but yet it's, at the same time, the mind reels when you're faced it with does. the actual implementation of it. It does, because, again, they, and I'm talking about the controllers, are not us. They don't That's think true. like us. They don't yeah. have morals like us. They laugh at our moral guidelines, our parameters. They laugh at our idea of integrity and honor. They don't give a good hoot about us. It, it, they, they mock us. They, they well, look at us as weak. Yeah, and they, that may have been the, the mocking business, may have been the attitude in the past, but our work in the last year or so shows that a big component of what's going on with them now is fear and desperation. Well, I get the feeling that there is a window they think they have to get through. Yes. And, and yes, and there is a little bit of a race against time. Which what? which makes them more desperate. dangerous yeah, yeah. and desperate. Absolutely. And and so to that end, uh, you are 100% right and then some. And But it, it tells me that these, uh, these, these non-humans, and I don't call them humans by my measure, uh, will do anything they can to preserve their power, including taking all of us or most of us down. They're not well, they actually it up. are doing that, and that's the real. Well, it's evil a slow burn right now, but right. but but I think you're right, and I think we can expect to see large chunks in a relatively short period of time of the world population 
reduced to uh, compost. Oh, excuse me, I, organic gardeners will be offended by that, but right. that's basically what it is. And it's, so. uh, it's unfortunately coming down to that in our projections and forecasts to support it, too. All right, well, we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Wow, what a scene. And, and we're coming up on October a year ago when uh, Cliff and George uh, projected the beginning of what we are in now. And now more and more people are picking up on your work, my friend, and, and standing on this. Well, the first week of October yeah. is looking pretty bad for yeah. the, whatever, the last of September. Well, you know, they, they're not dumb, and if there is any watchword by which much of the Internet commerce and information is now being predicated upon, it is plagiarism. <laughs> and it works for a lot of people somehow. It certainly does. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, back. With our friend and I'd call him a colleague, but I'm not in his league. Oh, I don't think that's the case at all. I'm very admiring of your work. Well, you predate you. my efforts in this um, strange arena of the universal squirreliness uh, by, <laughs> what, decades? I don't know. It is squirrely, uh, but deadly so. And I, 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 yeah, I tree varmints have... of any kind are, are not nice to deal with, and we got a lot of them in Washington, D.C., and yeah. then we've got the... They're, they're keepers and handlers. They're the real nasties that we have to worry about. All true. All right. So, what's the data show? How are we doing? What's what's uh, the latest uh, well, report? Well, we crossed a crossed a timeline here that we um, or not a timeline, a series of temporal markers that are in a stream of data. So, as each one falls, it gives us greater confidence in the ones that are behind it, mm-hmm. sort of like dominoes in a sense. Mm-hmm. And we uh, had the uh, earthquake on the third. We had um, uh, now have gotten uh, data out about this. Uh, just immensely horrific bond auction that occurred, or didn't occur really, uh, recently in which China showed up and, or didn't show up and didn't purchase. Mm -hmm. And as a result of which, uh, I went and examined a bunch of the um, Chinese newspapers and came across some articles discussing the economic future of the U.S. in very grim terms at the top leadership levels in in China, especially the 